Newcastle Primary that, that's come about for us to have some students within the school under a non-placement heading. Uh, one of the things that we do, one thing I do a lot of is whole school events. I actually probably could go under the banner of an event manager within my remit. And uh, the one that we involved this one was the Crookston Castle, Book of Castles, which I actually have here and it's, I've, I've enlarged it because it was a very big book and it's a very big task. Um, and I tried very much to engage the people um, that were coming into our, the placement, if you like, um, with this in, in a holistic way as possible. Um, and that's our lovely book, which is now what about 120 sales, which is fantastic. Now, um, to talk about the whole school planning, I actually had to think about the logistics and how I could involve students within this. And the logistics of a school, our school is, has almost 500 pupils and a staff of 50, we share the campus, it's difficult. So logistically I had to include them and include the students also and have this overall vision about what I was going to take forward. And of course I had to uh, you know, make sure that everyone was aware of what was going to happen. Um, and as part of that, the ability to engage all the stakeholders within the campus, including the students, and networking. And one of the biggest networking aspects, I think, is I have a good friend, Amanda Corrigan, without which uh, we probably wouldn't have engaged in this. Um, so but by speaking to her, I was able to widen the net and actually bring in students under, although they weren't in placement. So, and I think that was a really good thing, but I didn't want them to feel I was just bringing them in to do work, and that was it. I wanted to engage them in the activity and share the good practice that I know that I have just through reviewing C and my CPD and also I wanted to see what they could offer the school because this is a future educators and they actually have a lot to offer. Okay, now the learning experience as far as I can see for the students that came in um, was first of all where we had to go through the, fun the initial meetings, I had to meet them and by doing that I could sort of get a, you know, they could see that I was a real person as were they and, and, and how we were going to work together as a little team within the, big, the bigger picture. And I also we had to talk about the commitment. And I hoped that I gave over the commitment that I had to the project and I also wanted to see how committed they appeared to be and they were. Um, and obviously, as I said earlier about understanding the aims of it, I had to sort of put that over to them so that they could understand fully what was expected you know, at the end of the journey that we were about to embark upon. And then through, through these meetings we also talked about the dissemination skills, the task, how, you know, what could they offer and what best way that would be placed to help with this. I don't want to be a person that um, actually says you have to do this, this and this. Gave them some overall thing and they went away and said, well I'm, I could apply this to this, I'm quite good at that. Um, and what they were best at. So it, it means they're using the skills appropriately as opposed to just being telt, as they say in Glasgow. Uh, and one key thing, and I think this is a really important <coughs> learning experiences about time scale. You have targets, you have targets. But within a school, your time scale is imperative. You stick to that. If you don't, it causes harm. It has a knock-on effect throughout the whole school. It's a very good thing to learn time scale. And it's not something a lot of teachers are particularly good at. Um, initially, because you think, well, this lesson's going well. I'll keep going. I'm afraid it's not the way it, it goes anymore because you're, you're so restricted and of course keeping in touch well obviously that's just basically we had to technology is wonderful for that um, and the opportunities to learn new skills was I think I learned a lot from them and I hope that they learned some things about whole school things whole school as opposed to um, small groups or classes because a whole school thing is a different thing altogether um, and some of the activities um, that we worked on together was now the book itself has 422 stories now they had to do the written work, they had to read them, they had to edit them, they had to type them in. The artwork involved, well, um, two students we actually had in placement at the time had to choose um, out of 400, 460 pictures which one was the winner. And that's quite difficult, it doesn't sound it but it is. Um, because you have to make decisions about why, um, it's quite interesting actually. And of course they had to check, cross check, report back, keep me in the loop so that we all knew that what was happening at all times. transform it into an, an area of wall that they had to show like, nine months of work and how that cycle worked within a, a display for school which is part of what you have to do as a school practitioner and of course the PowerPoint presentation which obviously for them was very easy and 
that was kept in a loop in our foyer, and uh, we attended the book launch, which was quite, big, launch was quite a big thing for our school, um, and it went well, rather well. Um, and all I would say about this, and it's difficult to put this into seven minutes, I have to say, because it was a great experience for me, but the evaluation and review for me was that someone asked me today if that was a crucifixion, I said no, it's a yeah moment, <laughs> it's a success, well that depends how you look at it, so I was blown away with the level of professionalism, first year students going into secondary, wow, wish someone had brought me this opportunity, blown away, and I just thought, if this is our up and coming educators, then go for it. I'm really happy that this is how we're going to, to go forward. The enthusiasm and motivation sort of matched mine. I'm very enthusiastic, I'm very motivated in my job still, drive everyone nuts at school, but I actually love when I meet a match that because it doesn't happen a lot. You might know that when you go into placements. And commitment that they, show, they showed me was basically, I couldn't have asked for more. I thought the commitment was tremendous. And to review it, I mean, obviously you want to do it properly, evaluate it really exact. Maybe I will, and I might do it uh, against Higgias, you know. But at this moment in time, I just feel that we need to develop more students' engagement, you know, through in the variety of activities. So watch this space, we'll be getting lots of um, uh, adverts through Amanda. So, and I also, and through these students that I've spoken about the whole time, is I just want to say a big thank you to Cam, Fiona, Gillian, and Rebecca, who did all, who did do all the typing, the reading, the reporting back, saying, "We Jimmy's over there, what's happened? How does Elvis write this? I don't know how, how do you translate this? All that sort of thing." And Alistair and Brian, who were actually on placement and took it a step further, they had the hard task of actually choosing the, the, the photograph for the first the front page. And Alistair, I spoke to today, actually said he couldn't believe the difficulty in making sure that all the classes were in. Classes hadn't done it, we've not had time. Logistically, things in school, whole school things, are huge and big. And I think it's a great experience for a student to learn that, because as a student, I certainly didn't, certainly didn't know it, uh, learn that in any way. It was always in a pocket within a class, sometimes within a group. And I think this is a big thing for students to do, and I really want to say thank you to them, because they helped tremendously. Thank you.